Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's Kevin here with our newest member, Zhao. Uh, we've got a deck list and a few questions for his recent top at Sydney Regionals. He got top eight with Sakazuki. And take it away. Cool. Uh, my name is Zhao, if you guys don't know me. Uh, I've top in Nats and also recently in Sydney Regionals. So I'm just going to run through my deck. Quite straightforward, the leader, Sakazuki leader. Um, I'm running the stage build as well, so... There you go, just four Sue. It comes in clutch when he needs it, and it's pretty much just a 2k counter. Um, leave it on here. I'll run three stage. It's not necessary to do four. Most of the people run three, anyways. If you see it, you see it, especially with Tashigi search now. Most of the time, you're gonna see it. Um, four Tashigi, very standard. Uh, two Brenu. A lot of people question this um, ratio. The reason why I run two Brenu is because. Um, I don't know, like for my first two Don, I kind of want to just Tashigi in stage. I rarely ever play Brenner. The only pl time I'll play it is really when I have three Don and I go like Brenner into like stage or Brenner into Tashigi, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, it's really just a 1k counter. I'd rather just having um, um, more Kuzan or more Bossalino in my deck rather than Brenner. Because in the end, you really don't really play it as often. Um, for Rebecca, very standard. One of the most important cards in the deck. Um, Three Hina. Um, Hina is very important in this deck, but because I run two Helmeppo, um, there's no point in running four. It's just more dead cards, anyways. And Helmeppo kind of combos it out, anyways. Three Rob Lucci. It's a bit different to the um, the European deck list. They run two. And the reason why I run three is because so that I can do my RHL play a little bit more often if I don't see my Moria. Just so you can create a little bit more consistency. Because like when it's kind of awkward when you're on 9 Don and you can't play Moria or if you play Moria you can't play anything. And if you touch it, you search and put two at the bottom, it's just kind of it's kind of bad. Um, two Bossa. I feel like this card's a bit of a bait. I'll always um, prefer getting playing Kuzan rather than the Bossa because it kind of works as a blocker anyway and kind of draw a card because people swing into it regardless. Whereas Bossa is just more for the Yamato matchup, a bit for the Moria, but I feel like Kuzan is still better in general. So I run three Kuzan and then two Bossa. Um, three Sabo. I think like I kind of want to see it against um, Kara and all. So like I run three of it. Uh, and also when I'm like breaking hard and I'm going first, it's kind of dropping on curve, kind of help me draw into my Moria in the very, very late game. So I run three of them. Two Bossa is kind of for... Oops, let me redo this again. So two Bossa is kind of for um, Sakamira and also for Yellow. If I'm going first, just for the big body. And if I were to verse um, White Beard as well, which I did on my top card, this card comes in very strong. Uh, two Helmeppo. Some people run one and they think it's a bait for running two, but personally, I think two is very good just because, like, I can always just hard play it. And against like decks like RP Law, they kind of just bottom decking it, and seeing it, seeing two is just so much more important. Um, and also, like, yeah, just having two is just so much more better. Like, if you were to search Tashigi looking for stage and you see one Helmeppo bottom decking it, give you another chance to see another one, anyways. So in my opinion, two is just better. Uh, this is just a standard for Virgo. You never really play it unless you just break that. <laughs> um, but this is a 2k counter. Four Moria. It's just a standard. And you got... I played three Lightsaber. And four Houndblades. Just the very, very standard cards. And that's it. Sweet. Um, so we've got a few questions here from the community. Um, uh, we can start off with uh, question number one. What cards are you looking for in your starting hand? In my starting hand, I kind of look for Tashigi really and stage because the whole point of playing stage is really mainly for the Moria, not the Moria leader matchup, as in just the Moria character matchup. So, like Saka or Moria, just because um, the whole purpose of running stage is so that you can bot deck the 8 and the 4. If you don't mm -hmm. have the stage and um, playing stage in your deck, it's just kind of it's just stupid because like if you Tashigi surge. You don't play the stage out in the end, you don't really have the time to play it, especially your 8 Don turn, you kind of want to just drop Moria. I mean, you got spots here and there, maybe on your 5 Don turn, or if you were to go first, you go on your 9 Don turn that you can play it. But essentially, you want to see your stage and play on turn 1, or else this is going to be really bad because you can't drop Moria, stage, and then like Houndblades, it's going to be like too much Don. So, first is, I mean, like, sorry, 
it's not good, a good starting hand, it's just finding your Tashigi in your stage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so question number two, what are you looking for going first and going second? So first, meaning Tashigi. Tashigi and then I think I, I kind of just, I'm just going to go through the dream curve, I, I suppose. So you're going to go Tashigi into like, if you can go like brand new stage or Tashigi stage on your three don, that'll be best. Um, and then in your five don, you kind of want to drop Sabo or Kuzan. Depending on the matchup, normally I kind of like want to drop Kuzan most of the time. And then seven, you drop seven Bossa, or else you can do Kuzan into some sort of combo hand blaze. And then nine, you kind of drop Moria. But like I said, sometimes like if you don't have the cards that you need in your trash, you kind of want to go IHL on your nine don turn, swing six, or if you don't have you have you haven't played stage, just play the stage IHL. You kind of clear like some big characters as well. Um, and then. 10 is just a combo, just Moria, Rebecca, Hina, Hellmapper, and then Lightsaber, or the Sword, whatever you guys call it. Um, Tudon, I mean, second and second, you go... I, I always avoid playing Brennery. I think Brennery is a bait, like I said, you kind of want to go Tashigi into stage, because the whole point of playing stage is just to bring out the stage at the beginning, so you can play the, the huge spike in your 10 don turn. So Tashigi into stage is probably the dream curve, into Kuzan, and then into Rebecca, Hina, Houndblaze, or Lightsaber on your 6 don turn. Um, and then on 8 Dante, you can drop Moria. If you got Rob Lucci, Helmepper, you kind of clear two things. And then into Moria, Rebecca, Hina, you know, Lightsaber, Helmepper kind of combo. That's probably like the dream curve for going first and second and things you want to look for. Mainly just Tashigi and stage. That's that's like what I'm looking for every single time. Yeah, so you're running stage, you have to see stage, right? Yeah, pretty yeah. much, yeah. So the next question is, what do you think is your hardest matchup at regionals? Hardest matchup? Um, it's a bit of a troll, I feel like. Whitebeard is definitely my hardest matchup because it's, it's the one I lost to in my top cut. But personally, I feel like it's probably stupid to say. I feel like Moria is probably one of the hardest matchup for me, even though I'm favorite into it. Because all, all of my teammates kind of play Moria and I always just get destroyed. Um, because I feel like it's a, it's a deck where you kind of want to see your pieces, especially playing stage. Like, if you're missing one, you kind of can't clear it. But, um, but thanks to my teammate, I've been like learning... Um, a lot from them, so like I kind of like know the matchup a little bit more. But personally, the hardest one probably Moria because I only versus Moria, Saka, Perona, um, Whitebeard, and Kata. Kata is pretty much free in my opinion. You can never lose to Kata unless you you just don't see your pieces. It doesn't matter their trigger at all, actually. In my opinion, it just yeah. If you if you misplay, you lose against Kata. But against um, Moria, sometimes. If they see a lot of if they see a lot of Perona and you don't see a combo pieces, you actually you actually need a high roll against that deck, in my opinion at least. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, next question is what are your thoughts on stage and no stage Sakazuki and how does it impact you going first or second? Um I like stage a little bit more. I tried both version, because at the beginning I was trying Moria out and then I tried Saka, I tried Saka with stage and without stage. Um personally I like the stage a little bit more, but there's also like a consistency as well going with the no stage sucker. So I'll go with the the one with the stage first. I prefer the stage and you kinda wanna go second because like I, I mentioned before, you kinda want to shake into the Navy HQ. So um you kinda wanna go second for most of the matchups. Whereas if you play the non stage one, you have more like um maneuver that you can play play around with your deck. Because because on your nine don turn, now that you play stage, you don't play any of the greater option on Ice Age. Um, your 9 don turn is kind of awkward because you, you're swinging 6 in the Moria and sometimes if they have like um, something big like let's say if they drop um, I can't think of a good example but like if they drop something but then you could not do it on your 9 don turn as an Ice Age into like Moria uh, let's say, uh, sorry, let's say they drop Moria on their 9 don turn, uh, 8 don turn and if you're on 9 don and you're playing stage it's very awkward for you but if you're playing the um, event sucker you kind of able to like play more like dropping Ice Age into Helmepper into your Rob Luigi, and that kind of works as well because you you neck one with your leader and an Ice Age. That's like you, you're killing an eight eight four um, on your nine don turn. So like you prefer be going second for either either like um, either deck, but having the event gives you more like options to play around. That's more pass. Nice. Yeah yeah yeah. 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 So the next question we have here is, what are the key cards you're looking for against meta decks such as Moria, Katakuri, or the Mirror? For me, like I mentioned before, I feel like Kuzan is the one that I kind of want to look for for actually all of the matchups. Because Kata dropping Kuzan, if you're going second, 
or even if you're going first, you're four down on five down turn, dropping Kuzan, it literally just wins you the game. Because you take your first life, you're in three down. They can't KO it unless they play reject. And that's one card out of their hand most of the time anyways. Um, so literally, if you drop Kuzan, they can't clear it. Next turn, whatever they... they I always just swing five for Kata. And when they trigger something, you always have the Kuzan on board. Unless it's Onami, which is bad luck. But like, if anything else, like a trigger card, you swing five, make four, you know, Rebecca, Hina, and then you just bot deck both. So whatever they trigger out, it doesn't matter at all. Um, you just bot deck most of it anyways. Um, so dropping Kuzan there is just winning the game, especially with the Rebecca blocker on board now. Um, that's uh, on their seven don turn. They most likely just gonna swing five and then seven more. Or if they want to change it up, they can go like oh seven and then drop like some some other body, which doesn't matter. Rebecca is just gonna block it, and Kuzan's gonna survive another turn. And on your eight don turn, it's just pretty much just free. You just drop Moria, clear the whole board. Or even if you don't, just drop seven boss up to clear board. Um, in terms of Moria. Same thing, I want to see Kuzan. I always want to drop it on my 4 down or 5 down turn just because so that they can't prone on me in, in Moria. Just because if they want to prone on me, my Kuzan's going to stay on board. But if they don't prone on me, which they're forced to Absalom me, and if they don't have the Great Eruption card, they have to use Suru. And if they do have Great Eruption, I've got to get the extra free card on my hand because they can't prone on me. Um, plus, you know, Kuzan's already done his job by drawing this card. And boss side is quite important, but it's really just a late game kind of thing. Like, but you don't really play it early. Just because, like, they can't remove it and it's kind of just going to stay there forever. And it's kind of like a one life um, on your board. But it's it's not as important as Kuzan. I feel like seeing Kuzan on the curve is very important. And then seeing your stage, obviously. Just because the whole the whole point of playing stage is so that you can destroy the Moria, like, effect. Um, taking out a 4 and 2 cost. Because with yeah. stage, you pretty much spot deck both. Um, and then the other matchup was so you got what was it against? Oh, Saka Mira. Saka Mira, I feel like, in my opinion, is whoever see Moria win. You want to see your pieces, your stage, especially if you're playing the stage build. But obviously, if you're not playing the stage build, it doesn't really matter if you want to see the stage, but mainly it's just playing them, seeing the Moria. And then if you see the Moria, whoever has more Moria and the combo pieces wins. Um, as, yeah. And then you, the, the difference between like a good good soccer player and a bad soccer player is just knowing what to bot deck and not not what to bot deck because like let's say uh, people being playing greedy playing only one helmet bro, and then hard cast it bot decking and literally just stops them from their from their combo um just little things but in the end really it's just whoever see the pieces of moria and doing the most combo i see so moria is the the mirror mvp and kuzan is the overall mvp pretty much yeah all right, we got one more question here, and it's uh, any reason on why you chose Sakazuki to bring to Sydney Regionals? Um, I tested it a lot. It's actually quite funny. I started um, I started playing Moria, I think, because I came back from a New Zealand trip and didn't touch the game for a very, very long time. So I was like, oh, Moria is quite easy to play. So I started playing Moria, and then um, kind of got destroyed at the beginning. But like, um, I played online Regionals, Bubble Out of Top 64, but I felt... It just felt it just didn't felt comfortable, especially after you played so much soccer since OP05. Um, and then I was constantly losing the Kata as well at that time, which kind of like pissed me off. So I was very close on joining the the Kata the Kata crew. So I, I actually bought all the cards and everything, but then um, I didn't end up playing it anyways. Um, but then Moria is like way more consistent to soccer, but I just like the drop draw ability. Drop draw ability literally just changed the whole plan. I like. You get to like see more cards, which means it's more consistent. But you can't search for your Moria. But I guess it's in the end, it's all a luck game, anyways. But it's just whatever is more, more consistent. And then oh, also Black Yellow Luffy is one of the biggest problems because we didn't expect Black Yellow, Yellow Luffy to be there. I would have played Moria if it wasn't there, but I wasn't very comfortable with that matchup. So I was like, Saka is kind of just you know Black Yellow Luffy is kind of free into Saka. So if I would have played Saka, I'm more confident. Especially I already been playing since OP05, and it's. It's a bit of a change, but it's not much change with the Moria um, addition into the deck. Yeah, so sticking with your comfort pick yeah, is what much. it mainly was. Well, easy, uh, easy for that. Uh, thanks for the in-depth guide on Sakazuki. We're just going to take a peek at the deck list again one more time. Yeah. Um, big congrats on joining PX3 and top, uh, topping it at regionals. Yeah. Uh, any shout-outs before we go? Um, Shout-out to all my teammates. Kevin, the guy that's recording right now, <laughs> man's been helping me out with all, all of my matchups um, just before we go because I actually did not prepare as much as I did on OP05. Um, shout out to uh, Pan, uh, my man Brandon, and also Shannon. 
um, and also I got Casey and also Nick, pretty much all my teammates, and Will and also the owner of the of PX3, Jimmy. Um, most of my teammates help me a lot on actually practicing into the game um, before we start. We even play like almost 10 games on the plane just to get myself um, around how to actually go against the Moria matchup. But yeah, those are the people I appreciate. And also the Perth community. Thank you so much for supporting me. You guys know who you are. You've been messaging me throughout the games. And yeah, thank you so much. All right, guys. Thanks for that, Tao. And uh, just one more peek at the deck list. Oh, sorry. That's all good. And thanks, yeah. guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Thank you.